The information given on this program is not, nor is it intended to be, legal advice. You should consult an attorney for individual advice regarding your own situation. Legal Help Live is brought to you by Pan's Restaurant and Coffee Shop at 6710 La Tijera Boulevard in Los Angeles. Barney's Beanery at 8447 Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood. iLearnFast.com A division of CityCom and Rodolfo Buonacore at www.rodolfobuonacore.com everybody, it is time for Legal Help Live. Ralph here, Steve there. Today we're going to be talking about animal activists, ac advocates, and, uh, and activities. You know, there are a lot of, lot of people out there who are really very interested in their pets, the welfare of animals generally, and we have a couple of guests here today who are going to knock your socks off. They are fantastic. They're animal advocates, um, and, and uh, one of them, who we will introduce in a little bit, has been in this business since the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, I mean, this guy's a real professional. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We've got a lot of questions to ask. We've got a lot of answers that we expect. Uh, the subject matters range from, should uh, municipalities ban certain breeds? There are municipalities who have already done that, and there's some municipalities who are gonna do that, or at least they're talking about it. Um, should, uh, should federal legislation limit individual states' rights? Like, should the federal government limit the ability of California to decide how uh, farm chickens are raised for eggs and, and, and uh, for meat. And I know Stephen's got a whole boatload of questions. Not an arc, but a boatload. Well, this is a call-in show, so uh, it's your show. The number, the boards are starting to get lit, so call in now so you get in line. You know, let's get real basic. If there's a divorce, who gets the pet? I mean, I hear that all the time. If your pet gets injured, uh, do you get pain and suffering for it? You know, in many instances, it's been said, and I, I kind of believe this, that um, uh, many wives are closer to the pooch or the cat or the snake or the rat than they are to the husband who they call the rat. That's what uh, I was gonna say. If your animal gets injured, do you get anything? Are, are animals property? Should they be treated like property? Um, what do we do for uh, medical research today? Because everybody's in love with their animals, do we stop all medical research? Interesting question. Um, wh what kind of clothes do we wear? Is it appropriate now to wear fur or to wear leather shoes? Or belts. What about the pelt shelters in Southern California? Are they still killing the animals? Uh, what they now call euthanasia, like they're going to quote uh, Oregon to, to, to get a charming death, or are they putting these uh, dogs and cats and other strays uh, to bed. You, you know, that has always been a very serious issue. And, and you and I and, and uh, Warren, who's going to be our first guest, um, have done some work in that regard. And, and, and you know what? I thought we were getting somewhere many years ago, and it doesn't look like much was accomplished. I think municipal dog pounds, so to speak, are still euthanizing and, so many dogs so unnecessarily. And, and what, are, are there mean animals or are there just mean people? Are there mean trainers? Are there breeds that we should ban? Should you ban the Rottweiler and the Pitbull? I mean, that, that's, you know, there's a, a list out now. We're talking about a list in, in uh, uh, Orange County, San Diego County, sort of like a Megan's list of, of, of animals. Should there be one like that? You know, uh, it's interesting that you say that because in the state of Washington, there's a, there's a town called Yakima, Washington, and since 1987, they have had an ordinance that bans certain breeds of dogs, and they're beginning to talk now about repealing that ordinance. And all these Southern California cities are going off in that direction when Yakima's 
thinking about coming back from that direction. And why can't we have animals in circuses anymore? My goodness gracious, you can't go to a circus and see an animal. Well, I mean, how do you go to a circus without an elephant or a tiger? Uh, and what about the zoos? Are we, should we keep the zoos? Or are zoos gone bye-bye? Uh, what about horse racing? Is horse racing gone? Horse racing, dog racing. I went to pig races. It's all, it's all problematic. And a lot of people, a lot of people have very strong feelings about the mistreatment for animals who are involved in that type of, that type of uh, contest. And why does it cost more to get your dog's haircut than it is to get your wife's haircut? Um, <laughs> more hair? <laughs> I don't know about that. But lots, lots of questions. This is a call-in show. It's one eight hundred. 405-4222. We're going to be talking about animal rights, animal issues. Uh, those of you out there who uh, love your animals or don't like your animals, uh, we're going to have a dog uh, animal therapist on. Uh, uh, those of you in Beverly Hills you, where all the therapists hang out, you ought to be careful because Warren Eckstein is probably one of the best in the world of dog therapy. So uh, he, he knows how to sweet talk those animals. Oh, but, he sure does. He uh, sure does. And, and he knows he knows exactly what he's talking about. He knows that, and he's been doing it for a very, very long time with great success. And what about very human beings that want to be buried with their pet? I know that was big time in in in, in Egypt uh, years and years ago. It was, but in those days they used to they used to kill the pet in order to put it in the tomb with with the person when the person died. I don't think you can do that anymore. Now I understand some of the pet cemeteries are allowing you to get buried. Uh, with, some of those are really expensive. Some of those pet cemeteries are really expensive. And what about the people who bring pets on the airplane, or the boat, or the bus, or the restaurant, or the restaurant, or the pharmacy, or the doctor's and office, and they're quote the or 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 the TV studio. Are they really uh, care dogs, or are they like the the ministerial certificates that you send away for? Are they are they really service animals? Right. Uh, the, you know, the, there's federal law de defining what a service animal is. I don't think it makes a difference whether it's a snake, a guinea pig, or a dog. But it has to actually perform some service in order to be a service animal. Well, it, it does, you know, it, it gets me to get on an airplane and suddenly on either side of me there's a, a person with, with a, a, a little teeny dog. I guess it's a caring dog, but I wonder if it's See, real. I have problems sitting next to a lawyer well, on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Not at a TV studio. This is fine. And, and, and how do you talk to your pets? Are, are your pets really talking to you and do you understand them? Absolutely. Or do they understand you? Probably not. And or do they care? It's an even more important question. And, and and should you be a vegetarian? Interesting. Is that is that something? We are going to be covering all of these subjects. And again, folks, this is your show. It and looks I, like it's our show because we're sitting up here. But we would like you to call 1-800-405-4222. Number is going to come up on the screen in just a moment. That's the number to call. That's how to get in. Ask those questions about animal rights. We'll have our guests here in just a little bit. Be very interesting. I, I I can promise you that. And and will a vegan ever be elected president? I guess that if this was a political show. We could talk about that. It's a possibility. I, I think the greater likelihood is there'll be a president who becomes vegan after uh, after being in office. And and legally, is it, do you really need disaster planning for your pet? Uh, uh, of course you do. Of course you do. Um, you know what? Do do animals have rights? Should animals be considered to be property. These are fundamental questions that are now, for the first time, for the first generation, are being questioned with serious, serious intent. Uh, we're going to come back from our break in just a little bit. We'll have our first guest then. I want you to stay tuned, get ready with those uh, phones to be calling in, and we'll be right back. Woof. Stay tuned for more Legal Help Live. Giving a little can mean a lot to people who are hungry and homeless. Victims of domestic violence need help every day. I'm here to volunteer. Together, we can do it. If you do one thing, take one step to help those who need it the most in your community. You just might find that you can bring a smile to those who need it the most. Share your care at opcc.org. Looking for something to do this week? You could visit the California Heritage Museum. The museum is open every Wednesday through Sunday, 11 a.m. till 4. Stop by and catch our latest exhibit, 
find unusual gifts in the museum shop and picnic on the lawn. We're a block from the beach at Ocean Park Boulevard in Main Street in Santa Monica. The California Heritage Museum. Discover us. When I grow up, I want to help animals. When I grow up, I want to help animals. When I grow up, I want to help animals. Tom is my brother. He always made me laugh. Tom is my firstborn. I taught him how to drive. Tom is my son. At 20, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. The illness took him to the street, and we feared we'd lost him forever. But I got help from Step Up on Second, and today I have a home. And my friends and family are back in my life. Step Up on Second, rebuilding lives one step at a time. We are back. Legal Help Live. Ralph here, Steve there, and in between, a really good friend and a great guy, Warren Eckstein. You know, Warren has been doing animal therapy, training dogs, working with people and dogs, animal psychology for 30 years. Warren, you're working on your 12th book, yeah? Yeah, book number 12, yeah. Yeah, and he's been on television countless times and on radio, coast to coast, and, and international, um, God, forever. God, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a best-selling book, Memoirs of a Pet Therapist. Warren is here to answer questions that you might have when you call in at 1-800-405-4222. If you have any question about any animal, dog, cat, guinea pig, snake, gopher, fish, Warren's the guy. And I can tell you, I've called him up with pet questions myself. But you realize, I assume, that this time of year that there are 14,280 turkeys calling you right now. Yeah, what, and what do you what do you tell a turkey? You're an animal therapist. Thanksgiving is around some corner someplace. What do you tell a turkey when they call in? When a turkey calls, you say, "Have you passed your bar exam yet?" <laughs> <laughs> if a turkey calls me and complains, we don't have a problem, right? No, no. Bat. But you're quoted as saying, "Is your pet talking to you?" And what are they saying? Yeah. So what is a turkey? What do you tell a turkey? Turkey's telling you tofu. <laughs> tofu. That's what the turkey's telling you, Steve. All right, so, you know, Steve and I a little bit ago were talking about uh, uh, municipal ordinances that ban certain breeds. Where are you? I know the answer to this question. Tell, me, tell us about it. Unless you're going to start banning breeds that walk upright, I'm totally against it, okay? The bottom line is there's no such thing as a bad breed of dog. We all sound like Archie Bunker, you know, this is bad, that's bad. What you put in is what you get out. Let's take the pit bull, for example. I've been involved with so many cases and so many states wanting to ban a specific breed, a pit bull. Do you think if you brand, ban the pit bull that that's going to create less of a problem well, in that city? Here's the problem, Warren, as you know. In California, uh, we have a dog bite statute. And basically, th there's no one free bite in California. If your dog bites somebody, you're civilly liable. Uh, uh, Warren, is that breed specific? Is it? Yeah, it is. Does you know, it have to it, be a pit so, bull? So, so a vicious dog, doesn't even have to be a vicious dog, but we know that the, quote, drug dealers do not have poodles standing next exactly to them. Exactly, my They've point. They've got those big kind of dogs standing next to them. So I am a, a poor landlord, okay. and I'm living next door, and I'd like to know what's in my neighborhood. I want to know if there are mean dogs there. What's wrong with the city saying, okay, look, you can't keep the pit bulls and the Rottweilers and Speaking the rest of, of them dog bites. In, in this area uh, because they cause right, problems. So let's say I agree with you. Let's say we get rid of the pit bulls. Let's say we get rid of those dogs. What do you think is going to come? You think they're going to graduate from a pit bull down to a schnauzer? No, that's not going to happen. They're going to go for a Doberman, a mixed breed dog, a, a, a Tojo, an Akita, some other large breed of dog. So you're not going to get rid of the problem by victimizing the animals. I've got you need to victimize the people. Guys, I've got somebody who just got bit by a dog. Her name, her name is Erica, and she's called us at 1-800-405-4222. Uh, Erica, come on in. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Erica. Talk to us. What's your question? Sure. So actually, I wasn't bitten by a dog. My son was. Um, he was about two and a half. And he was bitten by this uh, my neighbor's shirt, um, German Shepherd mix. 
um, and I need to pay about $100 in stitches at the uh, you know ER, I was wondering what I can do about it. Oh. See, the cool. question I would ask is, where was the dog when he bit your son? He was out front on our sidewalk. The dog was running loose on the sidewalk. So that's an irresponsible pet owner. So why victimize the dog? The owner is the one that's responsible. It's not the dog that's responsible. As a matter of fact, it's very rare that you hear about a dog biting with a responsible owner who keeps the dog in the yard, on a leash, on a collar, in the house. It's dogs running loose. Who lets their dogs well, see, run loose? Here's the beautiful part about it. If Warren owned the dog and you just told me what happened, I would tell you that we could sue his pants off. Because in California, you are liable, the owner of the dog, which is Warren's dog here, who we had in front of his house, who happens to be nice to him, bit your young child. You have the right to sue Warren uh, for the bite, and he's liable for all the damages. It's not going to happen, though, Steve, because first of all, I'm a responsible pet guardian. My pets are not going to be out on the street by themselves. That's the bottom line. It's, you never hear about the pit bull that attacks somebody in the house where there's a nice, comfortable family. It's always the dogs running loose, the pack of dogs running loose. It's the pet guardians, the pet guardians, those are the ones that need to let, be. Let, let's come back to answer Erica's question. The answer to, to your question, Erica, is no, you can't sue Warren because <laughs> Warren's dog didn't bite you. We know that, well, that's, that's and what, I can guarantee that's that that's true. That's what everybody says. He wasn't my dog, but I know it was Warren's dog because he's got a big tag around his neck. It says Pet Show, Warren <laughs> Exting. See me on. Erica, you have a right to sue the owner of the dog. That simple. Okay. Um, get yourself a good lawyer. You may sue the owner of the dog. The dog does not have to pay any damages. The dog deserves a better owner than that uh, and, and a better lifestyle, and your son doesn't deserve to be bit in. Well, so everybody wins at the end. And, and and the how, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say the bottom line is let's again not blame the dog. For example, if it were someone's dog, which obviously it is, how about we go to that person now, sue them if you want, but educate them because otherwise what's going to happen? They're not going to want to go to court. That dog's going to wind up in a shelter and you know what happens at the shelter. You might as well say goodbye when you bring the dog in. That would be a very bad ending. I, I, I agree with that. All right, Erica, so, thank you very much for calling Legal Help Live. We got more callers. I Wait, suggest, thank you. okay, Erica, you take care. Uh, who's next at 1-800-405-4222? Jared, Jared, come on and talk to us. You got a question for Warren, for Ralph, Hi, for how Steve? Hey, man. We, we are here. Go ahead. Hi, uh, question, actually. Um, my, the lady next door to me has uh, multiple cats, a lot of problems. It, it, not only the stink, but, uh, you know, the fleas and everything they're carrying around and giving to my dogs. And I, I was just wondering what kind of help I could get with that. Now, that is a Warren question. Yeah, well, I mean, other than going like this. You know, it's an interesting question, but once again, you're angry at the cats. Be angry at the woman who's letting these cats run loose and breed on the property. Be angry at the oh, woman yeah, who's not... Be angry at the woman who's not getting rid of the fleas on her pets. I understand the situation you're in. What I would be doing at this point is I would be going across to her or next door to her, and I would be trying to have a conversation with her. If not, this is illegal, but this is just something I do. I would get some flea spray, organic flea spray, and I would spray her cats down. You know, but the question is, it's I mean, who's your irresponsible? Okay, yeah, then I'd have to catch all her cats. It just seems like, you know... But who's, like who's wrong? It's a, it's but that's the question. Who, who is the bad person here, Jared? Is it the cats that are doing something wrong, or is it the guardian now, or the owner that's doing one, something one wrong? One thing you could it's the guardian and the owner, like you're saying. Thank you. Know, you. They, Take they, her they to court. Take leave the cats alone. One thing you could do. Yeah. One thing you could do is think about getting a, for getting restraining order against the lady for violating all the local requirements about how many animals that you can have on your property, and uh, letting them run loose and not living up to the law, and it's, it's injuring you by all the bites and fleas, et cetera. If you can get a restraining order against her, then if she violates it, instead of throwing the cats into jail, they can throw uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the owner into, into yeah, you know, the, contempt. Yeah, you know, Stephen and, and Warren are, are both giving legitimate and valid and, 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 I, and I think good suggestions, but there's a problem at the end of all of that, and that is that this woman should not be handling this many pets. The problem with her handling all these pets is that they're running wild. And at the end of the day, now what do we do with all these cats? Now we have judicial intervention, we have a court order, or, or we have somebody sp uh, spraying organic flea powder on the, on the cats, taking care of the cats when the woman should be but isn't. 
what happens to the cats at the end of the day? And, but look at the other aspect of it, okay? How many millions of cats are being killed every single day in this country because they have no homes? And if you go to the shelters, they're inundated with cats. So the education aspect is important here. Send someone out to speak to her. Maybe she'll have the cats spayed and neutered. Maybe she'll have them vaccinated. Maybe she needs to learn more. A lot of people start hoarding cats. And why do they hoard cats? It's not because they're bad people. It's because they know if they don't take care of these cats, they're going to wind up at the city or county these shelters and five or six days they're dead and they don't deserve it that is a yeah, very very yeah. interesting comment so uh, let me ask you are, are, are you the kind of person that would want to take your pet uh, to uh, a shelter would you want to call uh, animal control and say come out there are 57 feral cats running around and now going to get emails from the feral cat association but there are 52 but cats. What about, but what if the cats were getting the uh, neighbor cats sick and everything? You know, I think if that 57 cats were harming all the other animals and, and all the other people that are taking care of their animals, wouldn't that mean like you? But you know what, Jared? About it would make it would make it right, and you know would make you. There's organizations or, or, all over Southern California that help people that can't afford to have their cats spayed, neutered, or taken care of. So again, it's an education problem. I am so sick and tired, though, of the animals being blamed for the lack of knowledge or the lack of the responsible ownership. You can't victimize the pets because they have a lousy owner. That's like saying, you got to blame my parents because I'm a lousy kid. Well, well maybe, may, maybe the, Warren, maybe the answer... <laughs> yeah, maybe, huh? Maybe the answer is, is it's really the question of what the status of the animal is. We, there are some groups of people that look at animals as property. They treat the animal just like a chair or a car or a, an inanimate object. There are other groups that look at it like a person and therefore they've got to be treated with dignity, etc. Uh, and most, most governments, I suspect, treat animals like their property. And it's so wrong to do that. What gives us the ego to decide how we treat something that's alive? Do you think that when an animal gets burnt, it hurts less? When an animal is depressed? Listen, my background's in behavior. I've seen dogs and cats get depressed. Well, I've seen it. dogs. Heal. I do. And I've seen dogs almost commit suicide because their life was so bad. So they have the same emotions that people have. And, and, and again, going back to the scenario that the victim here is not the animal or should not be the animal, the person that's wrong here, and this is where you legal guys got to come into play, you got to take these people people and that are treating the animals badly you got to convict them and you got to give them a sentence and get these judges out of here I worked mm -hmm. on a case recently where a guy was involved with beating a puppy to death he got six months probation he should have got life in jail if not the chair I think I think you're absolutely right I don't know about well, life you know we've got yeah, so many people Jared we're gonna say goodbye to you I, I hope we answered your question thank you very much for calling legal help live and uh, asking a question that uh, got Warren animated I'm I, telling I, you, I, I, no, no pun here. intended uh, we've got a lot of people who are on cue to talk to us on the telephones. Who, who's next? April, April, you're out of season. Hey. Come on in and ask your question. April, I, you can you now. Are, you're you're, on you're in. You're on. It's your call. It's you. Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, I actually have a handicapped dog, and she doesn't go out of the yard, but she does bark sometimes at people walking by, and I have caught some people throwing things at her, shooting her with BB guns, things like that. What do I have in my power to do to handle that situation? First of all, there are laws against animal abuse, okay? So people throwing something at your dog or, or victimizing your dog, call the police, but be the squeaky wheel. Don't be the person that calls the police and say, oh yeah, we'll get to it. Call them every single day. You have a dog with a physical challenge. What type of mentality is gonna abuse or go past a dog that's barking at them with a physical challenge? First of all, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm not afraid of the dog. I'm afraid of the morons that would injure or abuse a dog that in fact already has some type of challenge. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of laws right. on the books against cruelty to animals. And you know, throwing things at animals is is a cruel. Here's situation. what I recommend: quick recommendation. Go to go to a, a hardware store, buy one of those uh, those sprinkler systems that are motion right. detected. Put that in the front yard. When people walk past your yard, the sprinkler will go on. They'll stay away from you, dog. I've got another idea. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's it's slightly different than what uh, Warren just suggested. Go to that same hardware store and get a video camera. Find out who these people are. Catch them on tape. It's amazing what a useful tool a video camera can be. And I, I'm going to guess that if uh, those people can be identified, maybe then, as the squeaky wheel we're talking about, um, right. it, it happens in, in, in your yard now, 
that might be of great assistance to the police department. You know, and, and most... If most these are kids, would their parents be responsible for it? Yeah, and the kids are responsible, too. Depends, and, it depends on the age of the kids, but the answer could be, as Steve said, both. And by the way, kids that start out abusing animals, as a rule, tend to be people abusers. I mean, the, the Boston Strangler, uh, Charles Manson, uh, uh, Ted Bundy, all of these people started out abusing animals. So as a matter of fact, the American Veterinary Medical Association came out with a dictate that says that if you see an animal coming into your office that looks like it's abused and there are kids in the household, you need to report that and get involved. Uh, April, I, I, I hope I hope I that think answers we your move question. On to the next call. Yeah, yeah. April, I hope much. that Thank answers. Thank you very much for calling. And we're going to take the next call in the, in line. Who's up? Say, Nancy. Nancy, come on in, Nancy. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. I wanted to see what I could do about a neighbor who complains about a, a our dog barking, and we're having a hard time controlling her barking. Wait, situation. the neighbor the neighbor's barking, the dog's barking, <laughs> or both. Yeah, well, both are, yeah. Warren? The first thing you need to do is determine whether or not it's a nuisance complaint. You know, I was a peace officer for the state of New York for many years, and I investigated specifically these type of scenarios. And 90% of the time, it wasn't a dog that was barking excessively. It was a neighbor that just didn't want a dog living next to him. So what I would do is I would get other people in the neighborhood to testify or write you a letter saying the dog is not bothering them. And if you think the dog is, and if you really want to go further, and I've done this at times, I've hired an audio specialist with decibels, because there's certain decibels where the dog is loud. And if the dog is barking for five or 10 minutes, that's what dogs do. If the dog's barking for 20 hours, that's a different barking. You know, I also think, right. it's, I think it's relative as to what time the dog's barking. If the dog's barking between... Uh, uh, I can't hear you guys. If the, dog's, if the dog's barking between 10 at night to six in the morning, most neighbors don't want to hear that. On the other hand, there's bog dogs barking during the daytime. I, I agree with Warren. Find out what the reason is. Uh, and, and why is your dog barking so much? Or is it barking? That's the question. Is the dog, you know, 90% of the time I'll ask people and I get the neighbors around, I never hear your dog bark. But I never hear your dog bark. Are yeah, they sure? No one else ever hears them barking except one neighbor. Are, are, they, are, are, are they sure that it's your dog? I'll, I'll tell you this. When I was a kid, I lived in a, a nice, quiet street up in the hills. Um, and uh, I, I knew when Charger, the Collie, was barking. I knew when Duchess, the Boxer, was there was a, do a Cocker Spaniel down. I knew which dog was barking and when they were barking by, the, by their sound. I don't know that neighborhoods are like that anymore, but it would be interesting to know and to find out if the dog that's barking is actually your dog. Also, there's code enforcement in most cities today. You can call the local code enforcement officer. They do have sound decibel ordinances. They'll come out and check it uh, out. Check it out and, and, after a few times, they'll find out the neighbor uh, is... is but Steve, you said the, the, none well, of the, the, the neighbors are saying anything. It's, it's only a, one neighbor that hears this dog. Either yes. that neighbor has super yeah. hearing or just doesn't want a dog living next door. You yeah. know, but, yeah. but, you know, this is, we're not living... It's probably a little bit of both. Yeah, and we're not living out in a rural area. Most of Southern California is, is uh, gentrified. So uh, we're not mean, in Sedona. So would that mean that if I had a Harley Davidson motorcycle and my neighbor didn't like the noise, I would have to get rid of my bike or shut my bike up? Or if I'm making some other noise in my yard, that I would have to stop? Here's what you do. Go Absolutely. get a Harley Davidson. Start it at 6 in the morning. She'll be thanking you for the dog in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um. All right, Nancy, okay. I'm sure that answered your question. I, Warren, Thank you for calling Legal Help Live. We're going to have to put Warren back on his medication. Thank you. That's no, nice. Warren's our, our, he's the best guy. <laughs> Uh, Sally, you're in line. You're up. You're at bat. Hey. Hey, Sally. Hi, how, are you, how are you? I'm great. I have a quick question for you all. Um, I have a canine companion, small, uh, to travel with. Um, what, do you, what can one do when um, somebody else doesn't want, you know, like if you're on a plane and you've had this, you know, small uh, cage under the, you know, under the seat, animals well behaved, but they don't like it. So how do you respond? You are sitting next to Stephen. Oh, wait a second. What right, uh, and let me ask you this question. What right do you have to take an animal on an airplane to sit on the seat with you? Same right you have to take a baby and sit on the seat with you. Well, I, I think there's a substantial difference. Well, what's the difference to a pet guardian? Their pet is their baby. Their pet is their child. What's the difference? That's they love right. that pet well, as much as you love your child. Maybe more. Maybe more. But and less expensive, by the way. <laughs> Well, I guess some I of them I, are. I, I guess I don't have to pay for college, but uh, but the but, other thing is, if you're sitting next to someone, if Steve, if you're sitting yeah, next to someone, yeah, but you're talking about the little teeny dog. I'm talking about, you know, I see, I, I travel a little bit, and on airplanes, I'm sitting in there, and then shoved between me and the seat, 
is a dog who I know is not a care dog. It's not one of these. Well, you know, that's a problem, and I agree with you 100%. There are so many people out there with phony things that says this is a dog for, for physically challenged people, and that really bothers me because there are physically challenged people out there that really need these pets to help them along, whether it be a I wounded agree. warrior or whatever. I agree. So I think there has to be stronger laws, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be able to go mail something away and get a vest for your dog. All right, so it's, uh, who, who's going to answer Sally's Change question? Change seats. In other words, Steve, if you don't like sitting next to my dog, ask to be switched with someone who likes dogs. There's always someone on the plane that's an animal lover. Is that something that Sally could ask this, the uh, the flight attendant? Could you change this person's seat so that he's more, he or well, she can is more you, comfortable? Can you take... Can you take pets on a plane today? Or? Legally, according to the the, the, air, uh, the the airplanes, you can take pets if they can fit under the seat, unless it's a service dog. If it's a service then dog, then they're entitled to all cat, the rights and benefits. Of no, price. no, provided they're they're maintained and service dogs, properly trained service dogs, are going to lie by your feet until the plane lands. Right. So yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. And I don't think we're. And she's not talking about a service dog. She's talking about a small companion. A dog. A small companion dog in a purse, like that, in a purse or something. One right? of those ones that nips at your yeah. ankle usually. Well, I can't reach any higher. Well behaved. Any higher. <laughs> <laughs> well behaved. <laughs> All right. So the answer to the question is, have the flight attendant move. Change the seat. Uh, yeah. Okay. Change or, or, change move, seat. or you move with your yeah. animal to a seat where there are more dog lovers. Or, or do what I do. Drive across the country a few times a year. <laughs> 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 All right, Sally, I, I hope we gave you some insight and, and, and some help. But this is a... This Thank is you, a, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Hey, wait, okay, does your dog go now. through security? That's another question. Yes. The, the dog goes and, through... And, and the dog always forgets to take off the belt. The and, collar. And the, the collar. <laughs> collar. All right, we got another... Do we have Tracy still? Okay, not Tracy. Peggy. I can see the, the sound difference. Peggy, come on and talk to us. Hi. Um... I was actually calling because um, my mother, um, her dying wish is to be actually um, buried with her cat that she loves to death and she's had for a long time um, in a plot right next to her. And I was actually speaking to one of the people at the cemetery and they said that that is illegal. So I wanted to see if that was actually true or not. You know, I think the laws are changing. In certain states, for example, you can be buried, you can have your mom buried at the pet cemetery, but you can't have the pet buried at the human cemetery, though some of those laws are changing. Really? Well, Seriously? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In other words, in New York, for example, Hartford uh, Animal, uh, Animal Cemetery, the oldest in the country, you can now, let me rephrase that, you can have your ashes, your mom's ashes, put alongside her pet at a pet cemetery, okay. but you can't have the pet's ashes put alongside your mom in a human cemetery unless they allow that. Okay, burial rights except for, for uh, veterans, which may have different rights because of federal statutes, uh, and those, those people who have given their life uh, to the service of our country are different. Generally, local state law and local law determines the burial rights. So, each state is different. Uh, so some states may allow it, some I, states may not. I would love to see someday where you have a human cemetery, you have a pet cemetery, and then you have something in the middle where for those people that want to be buried with their pets, they have that option. Let's face it, this is the United States. If I want to be buried with my dog or my snake, why can't I be? You know, they're going to go to heaven just like, you remember when, when, when the ark was built? There were no people. It was only animals. So we're all going to heaven. No, there's a, there was two um, people. No one in his family. There's Noah. Yeah. Yeah, it was mostly animals though. Oh no, I'm sure. It wasn't. It wasn't residents of Santa Monica on that ark. I guarantee it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no Santa. Monica. What, what I what I would do is is uh, uh, we're uh, the, our next guest on this show uh, is a, a, a pet attorney, an animal attorney, and we'll ask her that exact question about the cemetery situation. Yeah, that's a I good idea. I don't know that answer, and I, it's a very serious it question. Is. And, and I know most people are, are in love with their, with their pets and would lo love to be buried with them. So we'll get that answer. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for calling Legal Help Live. We appreciate the call. And that's a, it's a good question. And, and, and Stephen's right. It's a good question so to uh, ask an animal Katrina rights attorney. after Katrina and this horrible situation uh, in the Philippines with disasters, I know that you authored a disaster planning for your pets. Maybe you could tell the audience a little bit about what you think should be done in terms of what people should do. We all prepare for disasters for ourselves. What should we prepare if we have a pet? You know, right after Katrina, I was called by the Department of Homeland Security and they made me a spokesperson for exactly that, the, the disaster relief for animals. In my house, I have a, uh, uh, a disaster kit for myself and Denise, and we have a disaster kit set for our pets. 
We have, I'm not a big fan of cages, but we have cages in the house, extra leashes and collars, a week supply of food, a week supply of water, and on my dog's microchip, and this is really important, a lot of people have their phone number on the microchip. What good is it if your dog is lost and your phone is disconnected and they can't contact you? So it's always a good idea not only to have your phone number, but the phone number of someone that doesn't live, let's say in an earthquake area, someone who lives in Iowa perhaps, so they can contact them and reunite you with the dog. That's number one. And number two is is really be prepared. For example, I have signs on my door. I have a card in my wallet that God forbid I'm in a car accident and something happens to me. Whoever rescues me knows that there are animals at my home that need to be taken care of. So that's critical to have as well. I think that's, I, I've not heard of that before, but I, I think that's a, a wonderful idea. You just used the word microchip. I take it you're an advocate of microchip. I am. There's been some discussion about it, but the bottom line is, you know, I hear on, uh, on the show all the time about dogs and cats that are being lost, and more dogs and cats are being reunited with their guardians based on the fact that there was a microchip. So at this point, until they come up with something better, I'm all for a microchip. Now, my dogs have a microchip. They also have a, a tag on their collar and a jacket that says, I belong to Warren. But other than that, so. and, and, and Whoa, wait a second. That sounds very proprietary. <laughs> they don't really have a plan. <laughs> what kind of program is there today for uh, returning vets uh, to be united uh, with some kinds of pets that can act as caregivers for them? I'm not talking about seeing eye dogs. I'm talking about, you know, we've got a lot of, lot of vets coming back with psychotic problems. Well, you know, as a veteran myself, just yesterday afternoon, I had the opportunity of working with two, uh, two veterans. One came back, he lost a leg in Afghanistan, and, and there was a female that was in the Army that was also uh, was injured. And, you know, being a veteran myself, I understand the concept of, of the, the mental distress that you go through when you come home. And everyone's demanding something of you. The VA says this, your mother says this, your father says this. It's so important for a returning veteran just to have someone that's going to be there to listen and not preach. And I see the changes in these returning war veterans with these dogs, with these cats, even with birds, have gone from being totally depressed, suicidal, to now being functioning back in society the way they should be. So I think it's a, it's a great thing. And they do an amazing job. And if people want to find out how they can donate to these groups and be involved in it, uh, is there a, a website they can contact? Uh, there are several different organizations, and I always recommend that you donate to the organizations in your local area rather than the big, humane organizations. So you can go on Google and look for uh, uh, Pets for Veterans, and you'll find a bunch of organizations. Check them out carefully. Some great ones in San Diego at the Marine Corps base down there. So they're available, and I think it's a great idea. I think that these returning soldiers uh, really can make a difference in their life having a pet alongside them. This, this went too, too quickly. By far, um, it's time to say goodbye to Warren for now. I, I know you can listen to Warren every Saturday on the radio on KRLA, it, 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 as has been the case for a very, very long time. And it's always delightful to be with you and to listen to you and to uh, to exchange ideas with you. Thank always you a pleasure to be here. with you and, and you too, Steve. Great, <laughs> very informative. Thank, thank you, thank you thank very you much, guys. Warren. My pleasure. Everybody, we're going to be back in just a little bit. We've got another guest coming up. You can keep those calls coming, and we've got uh, Q with three people involved. Everybody stay on hold. Keep calling 1-800-405-4222 because we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Legal Help Live. Our doors are open to all at St. Joseph Center where we provide intervention, prevention, and education services. Our early childhood development centers encourage learning while parents seek work. Families receive food for the week. Case managers counsel seniors, veterans, and families. We also teach job skills to young and old. Experience the joy of helping at St. Joseph Center. We're planning hope, growing lives for all those in need. A stranger in the phone said I want a sweepstakes, but I was smarter. Someone tried to open a credit card in my name, but I was smarter. A friend said I should sign my house over to him, but I was smarter. The Los Angeles County Department of Consumer Affairs can help you avoid scams and protect your financial well-being. Don't become another victim of fraud. Call the Department of Consumer Affairs and we'll help you be. Smarter Seniors! Before Christmas, my life was a mess. I was incarcerated, a drug addict, uh, totally confused and didn't have any sense of direction. 
Some of the things they did is they gave me mock interviews, they assist me with my application. What I'm doing now, I work for a company that gives me a lot of responsibilities and it's been great, it's been good. Uh, After my service ended, the biggest battle I faced was readjusting to civilian life. New Directions provides services specifically for women like you who face homelessness, substance abuse, and trauma. I joined the military to save lives. New Directions helped me save my own. If you were honorably discharged from the military, you're entitled to veteran services. Go to ndvets.org for help. We are back. Ralph here, Steve at the other end. We're Legal Help Live. We're taking your calls at 1-800-405-4222. And guess what? We have another guest, Jill Ryther, an attorney, UCLA law grad, but yay! Yay, I, I, I can forgive that. He's for an SC time grad, being. so you gotta watch I out heard. for him. Uh, but University of Michigan, which I love, uh, undergrad. Cool. Um, expand Animal Rights Now, Yeah, Jill. Firstly, congratulations on a career that involves protecting animals and animals' rights. Uh, from me to you, congratulations and, and, and thank you. Thank you. I love it every day. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. What is Expand Animal Rights Now? What, what are we talking about? It's a nonprofit organization that I started to expand the animal to, to expand the rights of animals, and our main objective is to end the property status of animals. I know you guys were talking about that a little bit earlier. Currently, under the law, animals are property, and it's very problematic for a lot of reasons, so we're looking to change that. Well, before we went to break, uh, one of the callers said that uh, her aunt or her mother wanted to be buried uh, with the pet. And in California, can can uh, can it happen? No, unfortunately. You can't. No, um, I you, can't go down with my booch. No, unfortunately, uh, my understanding of the law is that um, human remains are now accepted into pet cemeteries, but. Um, animals' bodies are not accepted into human cemeteries. Oh, so I could go to a pet cemetery? You can, yes, okay, you well. can. And if you cremate your pet, the ashes can go into a human cemetery, but not the body of the animal. All right, well, well that's fascinating. Yes. You know, we have too many people who are waiting to talk to us. We're going to lose count. Let's, uh, Tracy's been waiting for a long time. Tracy, ask your question. Hi. Come on in and ask. Hi. Hi. Hello, Tracy. You've got Ralph, Hi. Steve, and Jill. Hi. Hi. You're welcome. So I am, first of all, a huge, huge animal lover. And so I don't know if this is going to hurt or help my question or my sort of like what I want to do, but my next door neighbors have these two huge dogs. And the back door is not even that big. Um, but what they do is they keep them outside all the time. Like they're just outside dogs, quote unquote. And first of all, I can't stand that. Um, so, but anyways, they bark all the time. So, I mean, I'm obviously concerned for the dogs, but also it, it's disruptive. You know, we hear, the neighborhood hears these dogs barking all the time. And I feel sorry for them. And I just... I've talked to the neighbors about it, and they sort of just think I'm a crazy animal lady, and so they don't listen to me anymore. And so I'm wondering if there's a way to legally force them to bring their dogs inside or at least do something about the barking. You know, what legal rights does the neighbor have? Well, unfortunately, um, I mean, dogs are allowed to bark. It sounds like the problem is the owners, not the dogs. They shouldn't be allowed to have dogs if they're going to be leaving them outside to bark all of the time. Um, I mean, there's obviously filing a complaint with animal control. I wouldn't ever recommend that because it, it ends up being taken out on the dogs, not the people. I think maybe the best approach would be, especially as an animal lover like yourself, to approach them and, and talk to them about either bringing their dogs in the house or offering to find the dogs in new homes. It doesn't sound like it's yeah, working wait, out for I want to raise my dog the way I want to raise my dog. My dog likes being outside. Why are either one of you telling me i got to bring my dog in the house? Whether you're an animal lover or not, the dog's happy. They live out there. Doesn't sound I happy. I doubt that the dog doesn't sound very happy. Well, well, wait, dogs, wait, wait, are, dogs are social creatures. I mean, they want to be around. They want companions. We, they don't want to stand out. Well, we're not. We don't know that the the, the family's not out there. If, if, if there if there weren't two of them out there, I would have called. I would have called uh, the authorities by now. I don't think they're happy. I don't think. I don't think they're dogs happy either. Bark <laughs> all the time when they're happy. 
So, so let, let's let's well, let, Tracy. Well, let's take let's take this as the as the line. They're not happy. Well, then then call animal control. No, I don't think you should call animal control Why because not? the only the only because the only punishment is going to be to the dogs. You're the afraid of government exactly. for right now. <laughs> well, Jill, who should they call? Come and just take the dogs and put them to sleep. Tracy, I'm going to ask Jill the following question: Who should she call? I think you're. For, have you tried approaching the owners of the dogs? Have you? Yes. And and what is their response? They're outdoor dogs. We're not bringing them inside. They don't bark that much. It's our, it's our, they're on our property. So That's, is there cruelty to animals in yeah, our statute? Absolutely. If it was two children in the backyard and you said the same thing to them and, and they wouldn't take them in, it's still the same situation. It would be cruelty to the children. Absolutely. And you would have the same yeah. reproach. You would go to the authorities. You would go to the animal control. You'd go to the police. And somebody do something about it. You're you're afraid of animal control. Well, I haven't and, had great experience with animal control, um, unfortunately. But if if you're going to go the route of calling animal control, I would at least get the impound numbers if they take the dogs and follow up because it's it's a sad ending to any story to have the animals be impounded into any of the shelters, which well, she wants. Be put to I'm well, sure well, you'll adopt the dogs. Well, let, let yes, me ask you. Yes, or, or call expand animal rights now and we'll read yeah, them. Yeah, maybe that's an idea. Maybe that's an idea. If the dogs actually are taken into custody by animal control. Is it possible that Tracy could immediately, once that happens, call a local ad adoption agency to see if those dogs can be retrieved out of animal control and set up for adoption? It depends. There's not a straight answer for that. It depends on if the, um, the owners of the dog are trying to get them back. There's a certain hold time. But if they're relinquishing them, then yes, then the dogs are eligible for adoption. So, I mean, at least get the impound numbers and follow up. Like I said, contact us. We I, deal with that situation a lot. I think for the audience out there who is not familiar, there's a process every time an animal is picked up. Yes. And basically, at the end of the process, in most areas, unless it's in a real no-kill zone, the animal is put to death. That's true. Very, so very true. There's a, there's a death penalty in California. And it's, imp it's not only uh, done in California. People, dogs don't stay on death row for 28 years. They don't. Uh, what's the time? About two weeks now? Um, even less than that. I mean, okay. dogs can be killed. So we execute in, in California. But we execute animals. Sounds like a real tightrope for Tracy. Yeah. It sounds like a real tightrope. Tracy, I'm not sure we were able to answer your question. I'm not sure that the question is answerable. But we do have it's a couple of, couple of suggestions that we've floated out to you. Maybe you can pursue them. And call us um, another time and let us know if the problem's been resolved. Yeah. But you can't go in the people's backyard because you're going to go in the backyard and they're going to shoot you and they're going to claim that you were trying to steal their, uh, their, their animals, which might be grand theft. And might be a dangerous felony going on. So. Okay. Do we do we still have a lease out there, Tracy? Thank you very much for calling Legal Help Live. Thank you. You gave us a, an amazingly difficult question to answer. <laughs> Sounded simple, but it's really it's hard. Tricky. Is Elise still out there? Elise. Yes. Hello. Hello, Elise. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? We're doing okay. You've got a question for Steve I, or Ralph or Jill? I, I do now. I have an exotic pet. It's a honey bear, and I, oh, I actually bear. want to get rid of it. Uh, I don't know oh. if you, I, have, you, you I didn't get any papers. It was that a sounds like, so. Wait, that, just, that sounds like Winnie the Pooh. You just called me honey? <laughs> <laughs> what? what my question is, do exotic animals have rights the same as domestic animals if I... Jill, help. <laughs> what do we do with a honey bear? What's a honey bear? A, honey, a honey this is a perfect example of is why this it's... this a bear? This is why it's so problematic to have exotic animals Is this animals like a 300 pound bear? I don't know what a no, honey bear is not, actually. Um, oh, okay. You got a, a baby a, honey bear? Yeah. I thought but, you were calling me honey when you called in. <laughs> well, Steve, you'd be easy to handle. <laughs> Um, as I was saying, this is a perfect example about why, I mean, I'm very opposed to exotic animals belonging in any homes. They belong in the wild, and this is exactly, you know, what happens. People bring them in as babies, and they have nowhere else to go. Well, you um, declawed. They brought them to me declawed. That's oh. even worse. Um, I mean, that's, oh, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think that that honey bear belongs in a sanctuary at this point. He, pro he can't go back into the wild now because he's been declawed, so he has, has no defense mechanisms. Um, but... There's sanctuaries out there. Um, uh, contact me, and I'll definitely find a good sanctuary for you. I would say that that honey bear needs to be out of a home environment right away. Should have never been taken to one to begin with, but uh, we'll try to fix it now. So, um, yeah, there's sanctuaries out there. I don't know one off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to help you find one. Okay, Elise, I hope that answers <laughs> your question. Well, I, okay. I, I, I think that's well, as good as it's going to get. And just, you know, stay on the line, and the screener will give you 
uh, Jill's phone number so you can call her uh, off or, the or, air. Or, yeah, or at least an email. Okay. And, and, yeah, oh, thank please, you so much. Yeah, please no follow up, Elise. Thank you very much for the call. Thank you. Uh, let, let's go to the phones again and talk to Sophie. Sophie, are you out there? Are you still there? I am. Well, thank you for holding on. What's your question? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, my question is, what about my rights? I am so tired of walking over poop, being on airplanes with dogs and cats that I'm allergic to. Friends make me out to be a villain. I would never hurt an animal, but they're always trying to convert me to love them, and they make me feel evil when I don't. I'm just trying to... Um, feel like a human being and I'm always dodging animals. When I walk down the street, somebody's walking with their dog, I'm the one who has to move away. They don't move their dog because they have more of a right than I to walk on the sidewalk. They make me feel terrible and I'm tired of it and I want to find some happy medium between the zealots well, and Sophie, normal people. You know, there are lots of people who agree with what you're saying. And uh, I don't think two to my, the two people to my <laughs> left are that way. But this is an interesting question. You know, there's not all one way in this situation. What, what, are, what, what do we do now? Don't animal lovers and animals and other people who don't have pets but pay their taxes, have children, can't do all this all, stuff? Can't we all can't just we all get just along? Can't we all just get along? But, how, you know, what do we do? There's poop all over the ground. They don't Walk pick it up. It. They, they, Walk they, around they, the they poop. Don't, they don't pick it up. They pee on my damn lawn. They don't fix it. Uh, they come on airplanes and they don't bathe their animal. I mean, I don't want to be around somebody that didn't use deodorant. The animal stinks and nobody does anything about it. Uh, well, animals have just as much of a right to be here as we do. I guess I'm not understanding when you're walking down the sidewalk and you're passing an animal, um, why is it that you feel you have to move? Can you just not share the sidewalk together? Or if you sit next to an animal on a plane and you don't want to sit next to that animal, you could ask to be moved. I paid full fare. Oh, so did that owner, or sort of the guardian and the animal. What guardian? I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got more of a problem with, with uh, deposits on the ground because in, in, in Los Angeles and all the, the 90 uh, municipalities in Los Angeles County and LA County, you're supposed to pick up after the dog. Here's my you shoe, are. okay? <laughs> I came into this building today. Hey, you want to smell what I got? I don't in? want to. Yeah. You want to? <laughs> No, no, but could I have it? It looks like my size. This caller is absolutely correct. You lovers don't pick up. We do. You don't. <laughs> there we are don't. responsible. This you all goes don't. back to what? Not, even, you not even, enough do. Yeah, I go into a market true. today, I even get charged for a bag for granted. If a human being pooped on the ground, they'd be arrested. You know, <laughs> absolutely. when well, I was a prosecutor, I, I had that case. And you know what? They were taken 5150, you know what that means? <laughs> for evaluation and they were released because they weren't sick. <laughs> so I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that's true. There are a lot of people like this caller. I mean, you know, they, they, people need to be protected too. I mean, it all goes back to what Warren was talking about earlier. There are a lot of irresponsible pet owners, unfortunately. It's certainly not the animal's fault. I mean, they have just as much of a right to be here as we do. Um, yeah, but those bags on airplanes are not for poop, they're for vomit. <laughs> They're called vomit well, I don't bags, think we're having a problem not with, poop bags. <laughs> I don't think we're having a problem with, with uh, deposits on airplanes, right? I think you, it's more on, on the sidewalks. I, I think it all yeah. comes down to what Warren is saying and what Jill is, is now saying, and that is sometimes pet owners, owners are not responsible, and they should be, and I think it requires education. I have every sympathy for Sophie's position, and I don't think there's anybody in this studio uh, at this desk watching us out on television who has not had the same problem that Steve's got with the, with his, the bottom of his shoe. It happens to everybody. And, it, and you know what? I'm sorry to say, it's going to happen to everybody again. And the reason is not that the dog's mis misbehaving. It's because the owner doesn't pick up after the dog. Or it's because the owner is not containing the dog on a leash on a sidewalk so as to not frighten people who are walking the opposite Well, maybe direction. it would be better. It's not the dog. It's the owner. Maybe yes. it'd be better if we limit the number of animals that a person can have. That already exists in L.A. There's one the, animal per person. No. It's usually about three or four per household. Three or four per household. That's why there's poop all over the sidewalks in L.A. They <laughs> no. don't fix the bottles. You guys don't pick up the poop. It's a real, real tough problem here. I pick up my dog's uh, a, a, a responsible um, pet Owner. Sophie, I don't know what else to say. Sophie, I, I, I don't feel for you. It's going to take me after the, the show, 
and I'll give you some tactics to get back at them. <laughs> No, that's that's what we need. Open warfare. <laughs> right. The dog. Okay. Well, the thank dogs you. and the people. Thank you very Sophie, much. Good luck to you. Good luck. And, yeah, thank and, you. and use a flashlight if you're out at night. <laughs> that, that helps something. Um, Karen's on the phone. Karen wants to ask a question. Karen, come on and talk to us. Karen. Hello. Hey, Karen. How are you? Hey, fine. How are you? We're doing fine. What's so new? my question is in regards to dog parks, you know, when you're taking your dog to the dog park, you obviously are releasing them from that leash. And what is the liability of the owners in the park versus when you're taking your dog out in other locations off the leash? Just in the instance, you know, that, you know, dogs can get territorial or others can get aggressive with others. So what is the liability for owners when they're in that park situation? Karen, that is a perfect question for Jill. That Jill, is, that is. what's the answer? <laughs> the liability doesn't change for the guardian of the animal, whether they're an, an incident happens and they're on the leash or they're inside of a dog park. As long as the animal is in an area where it's okay to be off leash, the, there's not going to be a difference in liability as far as if something happened outside the park or inside the park. Um, so I don't know if you had like a specific situation, I'd be happy to address it. But if a, if something happens off leash out of a dog park, then there's the off leash violation, which goes back to the um, owner's, the guardian of what the animal. What about the bite? The dogs are off the leash inside of the dog park, the, the and guardian, I get bit. The, the guardian of that animal is liable. So, so you should keep, okay. Yes, they so, are. So, all right. Okay. okay that was. So that, that, Go ahead. Because, you know, when dogs, you know, you're like you're walking them on the streets and then they, you know, all of a sudden they get all excited and everything and you have a hard time pulling them back. Or they get, you know, sometimes just overly excited, but then one becomes aggressive, wanting to be dominating. So, right. like, even though you can't foresee that situation and happening, if it happens, you're still liable for it, even though the rules state that you can take your dog off the leash. Yes, absolutely. As a guardian of an animal, you are liable for anything that that animal does. And again, this just keeps going back to responsible pet ownership. I try not to use that word, but um, sometimes it's, it's the only word. Um, know your dog. I mean, be prepared. You know, we, we just like we need to know our children, know what kind of dogs your dog gets along with and doesn't. Is, is he a dog that likes the dog park? Does he prefer to be on a leash? I think it just always goes back to paying attention. Call Warren and ask him what your dog is telling you. Does he like the dog park or doesn't he? I think it's just, just be responsible and know your animal. Okay, K Karen, thank you very much for calling Legal Help Live. Right. Steve, Jill, we've got time for one more caller. It's Amanda. Amanda, you're up. Hi, I just wanted to call and thank Jill so much for what she's doing. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of this in the legal world in the United States, and I just really wanted to call and thank her and let her know that her work is very appreciated. And I also wanted to say that I have three dogs, and I always pick up their poop. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank I you, I and, I, and I thank you for that. Uh, yeah, and the, the bottoms of our shoes, thank you as well. I, 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 that's I, a great call. Thank you. I, I have a question. Um, I just, I, really wanted to thank Jill and um, ask her if there's any cases she's working on now that um, she can share with us. Oh. Yes, I, yes, thank yeah. you for that question, and thank you, Amanda. I absolutely love what I do. There's not enough of us doing it. It's very rewarding work and challenging, so I appreciate that. Um, I'm working on a case right now, actually, um, as many of you probably heard, is an epidemic. There's so many dogs being shot by police officers oh, yeah. all the time, um, very unnecessarily. So I'm currently representing um, the guardian of Chico Blue, who was a five-year-old pit bull who was shot very, very mercil mercilessly. Um, not an aggressive dog at all and um, we're trying to get justice for him and we're working to try to require officers to to receive some training and make lethal force not an option against dogs. Well, I, I think we're all glad there there is Jill out there protecting animal rights <laughs> and uh, I, I'm appreciative and and I, I think a lot of people out there as well. We've got to go. It's time for us to leave. We're out of time. Ralph, Steve, Jill, thank you so thank much. Thank you. For thank being you so here much, you guys. I appreciate Live. it. Thank, thank you. you very and much. And we appreciate will see it. you. We'll see you all next time. You all take care. Thank you.